He was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say this, <laughs> but I'm going to give you, he's like trying to simplify it for like a child. He's like, I'm going to give you $30 million and you're going to give me 70% of your business. <laughs> and what did you say? And I'm like... Hi. Hi. My was, name is Hunley Swan. Did you, was it a good drive over here? Yes, it was. It's pretty fun before coming to this, right? We, we danced? Yes, we did. We did a little ecstatic dance. Maybe we could put a clip right here. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> wow. So I'm actually really excited to get you on because not only do we look the same height right now, <laughs> no one knows you guys, she's on a pillow right now. She's actually not like a 12 year old that's this. Frequently tall. I'll probably like <laughs> shorten by like five inches after yeah. I get off this pillow. Maybe I'm on a pillow too. Wow. Maybe this I'm like the small. Mr. <laughs> so I, I'm really curious, right? Because everyone's coming on here and many people's goals are t to build a business, have some freedom, maybe leave their jobs, create six figures for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you dropped out of sixth grade fourth grade fifth grade actually fifth grade man i'm wow, slacking that's so cool we're all slacking man. i'm the only one i think that i know that can use the elementary school dropout mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's like on my facebook it's like what have you done in life i've dropped out of school i've created a business and i live in bali <laughs> it's crazy right because there's so many people even like that come to ubud that are just trying to find themselves Dude, I, I don't know her story, so this is all like. Oh, you have no idea. Oh, no, this I, is I, new. I, oh, this is all new. Like man. Her the, first, the, the first, medicine man doesn't know who Hanalei is. The oh first sentence, God. yeah, I dropped out of elementary school. I live in Bali. I started business. I'm like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> what? Bro, bro, six figures. So should we just go into your story from now? Yeah, let's go straight into your story. So I can do a little introduction for the yeah. people who don't know me. Yeah, we're also um, gonna do a really cool introduction in the beginning with like lasers and stuff too. Wow, I love <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> or awesome. maybe not the lasers. Maybe, maybe not just the some lasers. regular. <laughs> just just a little <laughs> <laughs> special one time offer lasers. So let, let's let's bring this. Did, did it start out the womb? Like were you selling t shirts um, out the womb? Actually when I was well. When I was born, I started traveling. My parents lost everything. We became broke. And so I was about one years old in our like million dollar million dollar mansion or something like that with my dogs, with all these cars and stuff like that. And we were at a yard sale selling everything. And so we decided after we went broke to start traveling. And so I've been to over 48 plus countries, six continents, and I've been able to, uh, for the past 11 years, I'm 12 right now, but for the past 11 years, I've been nonstop traveling and we made Bali our home base since then. And about when I was seven years old, I got asked, what do I want to be now instead of what do I want to be when I grow up? And that question was able to shift what I can truly be and who I want to be now. And a lot of kids get asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? But when I got asked, what do I want to be now? It's like that little spark inside of me that said, you can do something. It's that little glimmer of hope. And so I started, I asked my parents for $20 af right after that. And I made these little sewing like keychains and I made enough to make my first prototype. That's amazing because so many people complain. They're like, oh, you know, like I, I don't have the resources or it's hard or, you know, I'm, I, I don't have the time. Yeah. And many people wait until they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, after they've worked for like 20 years to actually take the leap of faith to do what you did. Yeah. And, and it, it started at 20 bucks. And I feel like what I, I was on a live yesterday. I was on an Instagram live for like about two hours, just sitting there talking with a bunch of people. And one of the questions on my live, someone asked me, um, how do you get the courage to do something? How did you do, uh, how did you get the courage to continue doing what you love? Or how did you get the courage to do this? I'm just like, you don't wait. Mm. take action taking action is the biggest step that people are most scared of and if people don't take action i feel like that's when they get into a place if they fail or something they're like oh i'm horrible now i'm never going to do something like that again they get scared of starting something new mm. and so just by taking action by doing something little by 
only getting twenty dollars. I started a six figure business with twenty dollars, and I made food. <laughs> uh, I made these keychains of these sandwiches or food, and I sold them to people at my mom's events. Can you can you bring it back? Because twenty bucks to six figures, mm -hmm. that's awesome. You know, yeah. I think I had a lemonade stand, and I just drank all the lemonade. <laughs> I don't even think I made money. Yeah. Like every single time I sold popcorn, ate all the popcorn. <laughs> Sold brownies, ate all the brownies. It was I should have just bought the brownies, you know. Yeah. But you took twenty bucks, <laughs> and you built a six-figure business. So mm -hmm. you took the keychains, you made money, mm -hmm. and then the moment you had I, the money, I made the keychains as well. You made so the I keychains. hand okay, okay. stitched all of them. And when you made the money, did you spend it on stuff or did you save it? I invested it. So <laughs> I. <laughs> oh, wow. Um. So I've kept this for as many years as I've been working, as many years as I've had my business, all of that, I've used this simple thing that has been able to fuel my business for the future, that I've been able to have money so I can buy stuff and all of that. It's, I call it the three, like, the three, I'll, I don't have a name for it, but it's like it's trying okay. to make You're it sound 12, cool. You have time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. But whenever I would make something, I, especially living in a family where my parents have always been entrepreneurs and we've been able to travel, work online, do all that type of stuff, I've been able to learn like profit margins. I've been able to learn uh, profit, like all these different types of things. And when I had my 50-50 profit margin like let's say one of the keychains were a hundred dollars it wasn't a hundred dollars yeah. but just saying it to make it simpler just for the people who are for listening us. for us mere for us. us mere we're humans like, yeah. us mere mortals <laughs> for this child prodigy yeah. so it's a hundred dollars and i have a 50 50 percent margin so that means 50 percent of it goes to my cost so that means I have 50% of felt. I have 50% of all of that money goes to needles, all these type of things. And the other 50% goes directly to me. To me, I could have $50 or I could try to make something out of that. Mm -hmm. So I split my $50 into three categories, spending, saving, and giving. And so those three categories, I am able to give a school uniform to a child in India because it takes ten dollars to create a school uniform and in places in poverty kids can't afford school uniforms and the government stops paying for it at the age of 13 which means it increases massive school dropout rate teenage pregnancy and child workload and so that ten dollars that percent that ten percent of our amount of out of our hundred dollars i'm able to help a child get education I'm able to help them be able to think differently and think how I have been grown up and inspire them. I recently, uh, last year, I went on a giving back trip in India and I was able to give these school uniforms hand on. And just like little things, like I've always been wanting to help people. That is my main mission. Mm. Every way I want to change the way people think about fashion i want to help people have a better life and i want to change possibilities and so just by being able to give this ten dollars ten dollars we take ten dollars for granted in so many ways and we could either buy a jacket or something that's ten dollars and made really cheap or we can have someone have schooling for the rest of their life Mm. And so it's crazy to think, and I know I just jumped from making these little toys um, and profit margins to helping ki kids in India with schooling, but really that's been my main mission with helping people. I'm an international speaker, so I speak on stage and talk about these different types of subjects um, and inspire people to think before they buy. I, if you don't know, I haven't talked about it much, but I'm a fashion designer. So I create eco-friendly fashion that, <laughs> <laughs> I create eco-friendly fashion that is using sustainable materials made in a humane way and is just made all in Bali. And so I'm cutting you off a lot right now. I, I'm just <laughs> taking notes. I'm like, wow, she's 12. I didn't even know how to share when I was your age. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like I almost failed kindergarten because they're like, you have to share your crayons. And I'm like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> and you're already giving. That's the crazy thing about yeah. most 11, 12, 13-year-old is, 13-year-olds is 
it's in a period in our lives where we are not even thinking about the world. We're just thinking about ourselves. Yeah. We're not even thinking about our mom and dad around that age, right? We're just thinking yeah. about me, 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 me. Because we're growing up in a society that makes us think consumerism is the only way. Mm-hmm. And for, uh, first world countries, consumerism is the biggest thing. We uh, Marketing campaigns, ad campaigns, all these things make us say, if you don't have this, you're not cool. Or make us feel insecure and like if we're looking at our bodies or something and let's say there's one part of our body that we feel insecure about like let's say um our legs or something and they're like you have horrible legs and like their ad campaign of course they're not saying that but like you have horrible legs you need to get this done if you get these awesome spanks you'll be <laughs> amazing you'll like be stuff loved. like that mm-hmm. and it's just yeah, like your mom will love you yeah. if you buy these spanks, <laughs> spanks. yeah, yeah. <laughs> never wearing spanks ever again <laughs> hansen you gotta stop this i'm throwing stuff. away all my pairs <laughs> all 35 <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just it's an idea it's probably like spanks are probably okay but i'm like i'm just finding something crazy. And so if we're thinking like they're making us have that hole inside of us and if you fill it with these spanks, you'll be happy. All we want is happiness. And we're sadder than ever. So many people have depression. So many people have anxiety. And it's I feel like one of the main contributors is horrible people that are like bullying and stuff like that mm-hmm. and consumerism. It's teaching us that if we don't have this, we are not cool. Mm. If we don't have this, we're not this. And that's the part where we're like, wait, but I want to have that. Yeah, it's so messed up just the way marketing and sales mm-hmm. is. is yeah. It's almost like you find people that are insecure about themselves and you feed yeah. off of their insecurity. Yeah. And it's horrible because, like, for example, I have a little sister. And I remember when she was growing up there was a moment in her life where she was shy she was nervous she didn't have the confidence that she now has after traveling Mm -hmm. but it literally took her to leave the u.s to travel to actually grow up and understand that we are almost like you know how in bali you see the cows going around like Like you just be driving on your scooter and then there's just a cow and you're like okay it's normal it's bali it's a cow those animals are domesticated to live in a confinement of a farm, never knowing what their actual ancestors did, right? But if you look at humans, that's the exact same thing that is almost happening to us. A lot of people, and it's not just Americans, it's people that are in this consumerist society, we're almost turning into the modern day chicken or the modern day cow because we're being domesticated. It's it's like we're put in a cage and like the 1% of our world, the one percent of like the people who are rich and who like run these ads and who work for these big companies they're like on the outskirts almost and they're like oh how can we make people feel horrible about their skin let's get them some foundation (laughs) like i saw this ad which i like online that i was so shocked it's like um this person who was laying down he's like uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. I just thinking about it. I think it's horrible, but it's like a uh, foundation, a uh, concealer before class. Don't skip conceal a uh, concealer. Um, don't go to class without your concealer. Like all this type of stuff for like makeup, and it's like skip class, not concealer. And they're talking like, like thirteen or fourteen year olds yeah, if it's it, class, right? Wow. Like, and it's like don't go to class. Make sure you look awesome, or like make sure you look like this. When actually they're just filling a part of us that's like i never thought i had horrible skin i never thought my eyes looked horrible i never thought my nose was too big it's like these ads are saying that you have these horrible things and they're like if you have this you're gonna be amazing and all that type of stuff and i feel like i feel like it's breaking our society down in so many ways and in first world countries that's what's hitting them the most Mm. because they don't live in a place where happiness is a normal thing. Mm. And I feel like society is putting us in a place where if we hate ourselves more, we're going to want to buy more stuff. Man, this is insane. And this is the cool thing that, I mean, when you do these fashion shows, you you have people wear your brands. Your, you, your mom, your dad, who we're going to get on this podcast like later on. Actually, your dad's like over there, just like, yeah, just like 90 degree angling the <laughs> thing. Really good, dad. It's, it's like that's, that's going to be the new age. You know what you're creating right now? 
a new revolution where instead of Instagram husbands, where you see, you know, those those girls in the waterfall yeah. that are like looking out in the waterfall. I'm usually the one behind the camera. Yeah, and then you have Hanson like in a deep squat, just like no one knows. Yeah. Army crawling with a camera. And he's yeah. just like filled with mud and then his girlfriend's just like looking beautiful in a dress. Yeah. You're going to create a new generation of Instagram fathers that just follow, because you're like yeah. inspiring, you know, the next... Yeah. Demographic. You know? I think also one thing about Instagram is I think it's I'm mainly on Instagram. Like I have a hundred thousand followers on there, Damn. but it's like <laughs> <laughs> self promo. And I feel like Instagram is one of like social media is really killing our society because it's putting us with so much hate. And like even if these like Photoshop. Um, Facetune, all these things. It's saying if you don't have this, like it's finding all those insecurities in our face. It's finding all our insecurities in our body. So we want to use that to make us look like our perfect self. Yes. Yeah, and I feel like Instagram is mm -hmm. fueling that, where they're saying, like, the more people who have like this super super duper skinny waist, and then these ginormous butts or like ginormous boobs and like all these different types of things. That's the epitome of like perfection like that is the best thing ever mm -hmm. and so i feel like it's horrible how we're teaching our kids how we're teaching girls and women to photoshop their bodies to make them look appealing to other people yeah and to make them get more likes it's and it's insane right like so for example i had a lot of friends especially when i was younger their parents didn't let their kids get into social media yeah because they're afraid, oh, well, what if, like, someone makes fun of them? They're cyberbullying. Well, uh, they're going to go on them anyways. Well, that's, they like, just, the thing. It's, like, as kids, like, w we need, like... Um, you guys are rebellious. You're, like, no. I'm <laughs> no, going to do what I want. But the thing is, let's say, let's take into our immune system. Yeah. Like, how we fight off disease as we, like, learn... How our body learns to fight off disease and stuff like that. And so, let's say, as a young kid, if we're not open and we are not in that space where we're able to play in mud, where we're able to get sick, mm -hmm. and we're just completely like out of that zone, when we're adults and in the real world, we won't know how to fight off those mm -hmm. bacteria. That's so tr that's so real, right? Because for example, when what, what most parents are doing to their kids is they're born, and the first time they're born, they're like, I need to protect this. I love this yeah. person so much. I'm gonna make sure everything's wiped. I'm gonna sanitize everything. They grow up, the first time like the kid cries at like seven years old, mom like picks him up, like babies him all the way until yeah. he's like 12, 13, yeah. 14. And he's like, oh, you know, the world is nice. The world is nice. But in the entire time, you know, the parents were always there just kind of like consoling the kid. Yeah. And this kid has this like messed up reality of what actually the it's world the is. And that leads to brats. That's well, like, and then put that's it this like way, right? They're 21, they're 22, they're 23, they're graduate college. They're, they're so excited because like, oh, my mom supported me my entire <laughs> life. And then bam, life just punches them in the face. Yeah. Right? And I feel like it's kind of the same like with uh, like Instagram and yeah. stuff or like social media. If they're not learning how to fight against it, if they're not learning how to like use social media in the right way, not learning what it is, they're going to have when they're adults, they're going to get cyber bullied and they're going to be like, wait, I don't they're know how to cry. stop they're this. They're going to cry. They're just going to give up. Yeah. Like, I don't go back they're like, I don't know how to stop this. Like they're not used to it. That's why we have to build up our immune system and like hmm. really learn. So about what's it these like, right? Like what's it like? You're 12 years old. And I mean, there's times where even like a couple years back, even recently when I started social media, you read that one negative comment you read and no one ever says it. They're like, Oh man, like it's, it's, you just like make videos and stuff like that. And everyone's going to love you, but no one knows the moment you put yourself out there, you're going to have almost like an equal amount of hate yeah. and ridicule. And, and sometimes you don't have an equal amount. It's mainly like you have so many likes, but then that one comment that says your you're day. horrible, yeah. it ruins your day. Well, you how, do you do how do you do it? How do you uh, put up with that, right? Like the well, first time it happened, how, one did, how thing, did it make you feel? One thing that my dad taught me, this like a trick, is whenever someone leaves like a horrible comment on your post or something, just say, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like they'll try to figure out like, oh yeah, you're disgusting. Like, why are you doing this? Just like really why did you get this opinion like keep on asking them and they'll just go to a point where they're like why am i doing i this? love you <laughs> it's just like i don't know what's going on but like you mainly don't 
you shouldn't think about that type of stuff. You should think about the positive. And remember, like, some people just hate to hate. Mm -hmm. And it's not, like, anything against you. Just really just put pride in yourself. And not, like, in a way where you're like, I'm the best person ever. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, put pride in a way where you, like, are able to say, thank you for your opinion. I don't need that. What was it like having this mindset and this wisdom while you were in school surrounded by a bunch of people just picking their noses and, and like picking their wedgies? Well, like I went, I went. <laughs> and we were all thinking it, man. Like I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I would be that 12 year old kid while you're talking about while saving you're talking me. About, yeah. I'd be just like. <laughs> I went through, I went through a really tough time in school, actually. Like yeah. I got, since I was like around, let's say eight or nine. So just a couple of years ago. But, <laughs> it was back in my day, eight or yeah. nine. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I was like, this was after I got, like, I started doing my business and I started creating and I started falling in love with art and stuff like that. And so I remember I would do, like, my videos or stuff like that. And at school, um, like, when we had a couple minutes to go in, like, IT or, like, go on the computers and stuff, they would always search up my, like, old videos and stuff, and they would laugh at me or, like, mm. call me names or, like, oh, look at you, you're, like, doing this or something. I don't know. But I went through a really tough time where I got really horribly bullied by my best, my best friend. And if you're watching the audio, if you're listening to the audio, I did quotation marks. <laughs> uh, but really, like, I had a really horrible time because I stopped doing my videos. I stopped being creative because I thought if this is what people don't like about me and I want to be loved, so maybe if I stop that, then they'll like me. Um, but it went through a really horrible time where I wasn't learning. I think the school system is horrible in how they teach it. They're teaching a broad audience, not individual children, which we all learn in a different way. That's another topic and another podcast. Yeah, but 100%. really, <laughs> You're, um, we're neighbors, so I'm yeah. gonna, hey, well, sell yeah. some lemonade and podcasts and create six figure businesses. Yeah, <laughs> while I just pick my nose. Yeah. Um, what was that? What was what? Like, cause that's such a thing that I don't want to have you just glance over because what you did, what you went through. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. There's people that will be crippled by that for years, yeah. right? And what I want to know is, because because we just glanced through it and we glanced over it and it was the past, but like I think explaining more about that, like what were you currently feeling or what were you feeling at that moment when your best friend kind of made fun of you? Because that was the exact same thing that happened to me in yeah. college and it destroyed me at 18. It destroyed me as well. Like I, but the thing is, I feel like there's different ways where you either like break out and like, oh my God, this is horrible. This is what happening. Or there's another way that like destructs you more, which is keeping it bottled up. Mm -hmm. I bottled that up for a year. I didn't t tell my mom, my dad, anyone and like I was every day I felt like I was putting on a mask and I was like called the dumb kid and stuff because either like I would ask my friends like hey do you know this math problem I kind of forgot it or like hey can you help me out with my spelling since of course traveling I always wanted to be in school one time like when I was in first grade they already learned the ABCs let's say second grade they didn't so I was relearning the ABCs or like all these different types of stuff of course not the ABCs but you know what I mean but I would like ask like hey can you help me and they're like no why why do you need help like all this type of stuff I know this like all of that type of stuff trying to make them better and it just broke me down in a way where after a year or so of this happening I just broke down I'm like this is what's going on and after I dropped out of school and continued my life now I'm so much more happy mm -hmm. and I just feel so much more amazing in being able to be with entrepreneurs, being able to be with adults that actually understand me more than children do. Um, I think you understand adults better than they understand them themselves. Yeah. Though, so. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I kind of like hanging around adults more because they have a bro yeah. broader mindset and they have a better mindset on what possibilities can. I like having real conversations, not, hey, what did you eat for lunch? What's your favorite color? Hey, do you want to <laughs> hang out? Let's do play you want to share Paul. crayons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I would so never cool. share my art supplies. That's one thing. I hate sharing art supplies. I have like my really expensive stuff. Uh -huh. Don't share that type of stuff. Uh -huh. That's something I will say if you touch, my, touch my if you touch my crayons, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool because like making that switch, switch, hanging out with adults, you realize that they're just all kids. Yeah. Too like when we do acro yoga or whatever, you'll you'll get on one of those swings and you'll Tarzan just yeah. drop kick me. 
You remember that? <laughs> that was really That's, funny. That's, I think, how we met. I was, we, we talked a little bit. I mean, I was friends with your parents. Then um, I had a conversation with you where I was talking to you and we were having a normal conversation. But then when we got up, I stood up and you were like still very short. I forgot you were 12 years old. Um, but back to that thing, what made you shift out of that sadness, that depression, that anxiety? I just let go. Like I just talked to my parents and we just, I'm like, I can't be here anymore. We went out to school. Like it took, it's a long story, but it took a while. Like, of course my, the person who was bullying me, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, the person who was bullying me, like, of course, said, I never did this, like, all of that type of stuff, but really, I have proof inside. Um, but, yeah, I just dropped out of school and started continuing my business, because, of course, I have better priorities than school. <laughs> well, um, when I dropped out of dental school, the first couple wait, months... Wait, you were a dentist? <laughs> you want your teeth fixed? Because I would be able to just carve you a tooth out of soap. That's all I know to do. <laughs> you know how to carve studio. There's a dental. There's a dental chair thing. What you want? There. You want a barber? They got a haircut. We got a rock climbing <laughs> thing back there. Wait, you were gonna be a dentist? Yeah, I was. I was pretty in deep. I was uh, first year of dental school, and while I was becoming a dentist, I was also building my business. And what actually? It, it, I love. I I was always wondering why I resonated with you so much because there was something about your story that v felt very similar to mine. It's just insane because, like, for example, I was 18 when I was in my business and going to become a dentist, right? And I remember I was from the kid with all the friends, always having fun, uh, always happy. I started the business and then the business started becoming successful. But then because of that, all of my friends and my fraternity brothers and all of like my cl close friends, yeah, I found out that they were talking just horrible things behind my back. Yeah. And it was just me and then my girlfriend at the time. And then because it was just me and my girlfriend and my business, I spent too much time with my girlfriend. So I started like getting more of a, like, you know, like you. The first you actually, world mindset, I call it. Well, you know, you, you might not know this because like you're 12, but maybe, maybe you do. But when you start dating someone, and I'm going to tell you this right now because uh, you're so mature for your age, right? And I'm not yeah. going to do that. Oh, when a mommy loves a daddy. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do that. But what essentially happens so I could paint the picture because yeah. I like how there's just a conversation. It's not just an interview of like, what's your favorite color, Hanalei? My you know? favorite color is turquoise. So, seriously? Turquoise or black. Me too. We have so much color. People uh, <laughs> consider black as a shade, yeah. but I still think it's colored. I mm. just either say turquoise it's a, or it's black. It's a way of life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So with that being said, you know, I was, this is what happens when you're older and yeah. I feel so... Like, the, the man that you're going to attract has to be for sure, like, a billionaire, super ripped, like, gives hundreds of millions of dollars of charity to actually deserve no, your love when you're older. No, I would just say people who have a great personality. So smart. Or it's, like, doesn't matter about so what they're wisdom. doing. If they have a great personality and if they have a good yeah. mindset, like, that's, yeah. Well, it's just so insane, right? Like, so, for example, when I was in the relationship, uh, because it was just me and my girlfriend and my business... What happens if you're not really aware of how other people are treating you? You kind of like start adopting each yeah, other's their mindset. mindsets. It's and like if you want to hang yeah. around lazy people. No, I'm not saying my girlfriend was lazy. No, right? no, no, no. <laughs> my girlfriend was savage. I'm, do, I'm doing this as an example. Yeah. I'm like, if you hang around lazy people, you're going to become lazy. If you hang around great minded people who are entrepreneurs, you're going to become a great minded entrepreneur. Well, that was the thing, because this is what I want to paint the picture. It was just me, my business, my girlfriend. All my friends were gone. I didn't have entrepreneur friends. Yeah. Uh, I just want to paint just like how amazing it is to have, you know, even your parents around you because. When I was stuck and I only had my girlfriend and I almost depended too much on the relationship for happiness, mm -hmm. when I lost everything, I'm talking about like I ended up losing my girlfriend because I stopped being the man that I used to be. Yeah. I lost my best friends. And on top of that, my business was crashing and I just also dropped out of dental school. So what I want to wow. get back to the conversation to was in those first couple months of having all that happen to me. It wasn't just like, okay, like dropped out, peace out, and then yeah. like successful. There was like a couple months where I almost questioned myself. And you yeah. did this when you were nine. Did you, what, were, what were going on through your mind when you dropped out? Because no um, one really does that. When I dropped out, I'm like, oh, it's going to be like endless. Uh, like just do anything I want. But I'm like, actually, I got to do homeschool and stuff like <laughs> that. Um, but really, when I dropped out, I'm like, I feel like I just lost all my friends. <laughs> And I felt like since I never, 
now I don't see them on a day to day basis. It's like hard to keep connections as someone in school would have. But I feel like when I dropped out, a weight just lifted off of me. Just, I was able to draw all day. I was able to be at my happiness. And like the school that promised that was like, uh, creativity is our main thing we focus on. They didn't even have an art teacher. I was the art teacher at 10 years old. <laughs> this is a true story. I was an art teacher for a school. Um, but really when I dropped out, a weight lifted off of me and I just felt so much more happier because I was doing what I love. I was living up my highest values. So, mm. merp. <laughs> Did you just beep? Merp. Merp. You just meowed. When I just don't know what to say, I just go merp. That, that's that's like a default thing. What I do when I don't know what to say is I just abort and just sleep on <laughs> <laughs> I just like pass out. Or if I what feel do you nervous? want to end a conversation? You're just like... <laughs> <laughs> like, like if I don't want to talk, like someone <laughs> asks me a question, I don't want to hear, I'm just... Abort. <laughs> Start drilling. <laughs> just charge. <laughs> Recharge. Re Recharge. Reset. That's so, that's so amazing, right? Because you went from there alone, suck. So for everyone listening, I mean, if a 12-year-old can do it, what, what's stopping you? What, what yeah. excuses do you have? And the thing is, I'm an international speaker, so I speak uh, stages all over the world. I'm going to be speaking at Burning Man this year as wow. well, yeah. so that's going to be really cool. That's freaking um, awesome. But yeah, so I've been able to... Is there a height limit for Burning Man? I heard there's a high Excuse limit. Excuse me. I'm, I'm not being heightist. I'm just saying. She can borrow that pillow. You could borrow that pillow. <laughs> oh my God. I feel so offended. <laughs> I have Merp. stilts, okay? <laughs> I have stilts. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll let you in. So, with that being said, and where you were in your business, when did things kind of turn around? When did you see the light at the end of the tunnel for everyone that's in that point in their life where yeah. they're despair? Maybe they've. They're, they're maybe, maybe they gave up everything and it's been six months before they even seen a dollar or a dime come in. Yeah. They're burning the midnight oil. They're building a business that isn't successful yet. Yeah. And every single day they're looking at their bank account, just dwindle yeah. going down. And really, I think I started seeing the light when I made my first sale as well. Um, because all my work and energy, if you don't know, I feel like we haven't talked about this, but I am a fashion designer. I create eco-friendly fashion for women, men, all these different types of things. And so, um, when I made my first sale was like, I felt happy again because that's after designing, creating all these collections, like I was so happy, but I feel like how to get out of that is just start to... Find people that can help you because we all think, especially as entrepreneurs, we are in this alone. Mm. We are the only people that can build our business. We are the only people that can make it happen. But really, we can, you can lift that weight off with other people. And who are those and people for you? For me, it's my parents since they have been growing businesses before I was Do born. Do you have a favorite one? I won't tell. Oh my God. Even though your dad's right there, we'll just cover his ears. <laughs> Put like little pillows on Oh my on God. His. Um, the thing, alarm. Uh, Be careful, he's holding your IG live. <laughs> just start like, zooming. Abort, abort. <laughs> abort. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, they've been able to support me and helped me in so many ways. They've, my mom especially helped me in my speaking, helped me in my content driven, all that type of stuff. And my dad's helped me support myself be able to just work with me one-on-one -on -one, and he's just like we bounce off each other really well and so I feel like we all help each other in every way but oh sorry that's <sighs> some strong tea right yeah we're not strong. we're not feeding her kratom I don't know if there's a age limit with kratom. Is there I was I was gonna say something but I was like I don't think we put kratom in here we didn't we, did you no, no, no. Someone didn't put Kratom. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, I've been able to be supported, and I think that's the best thing. If I did this alone, I wouldn't be here. And then other than and your parents, because most people don't have their parents to support them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, like, um, it's so amazing that your parents are the most loving human beings, yeah. and they're so fun. Your but dad's beard is, mad, like, huge. It's, it's magical. <laughs> But what I would say, other people that supported me, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> Merp. Uh, I think my I think my parents mainly supported me in the first start. And then and now, then we, how and about then, now? And then I started growing and like yeah. had more people, like uh, Ginny, who I saw was on your show a couple of days ago, and like you, like all these different types of people that after I built everything, I've been able to meet new people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel like who supported me was my mom, my dad, and at the time I had a. Uh, someone who would help me with my designs and stuff. And then I had my team of six dudes. And so these were the people who supported me. And as then I've grown, I've started having more people, which I think is amazing. Don't you have other like, like 12 and 13 year olds that also have their businesses? No. Or was it, was it, you were the youngest one. I think your youngest friend that has her business was 18. I think I met her at your fashion show a couple weeks back. Really? Wow. (laughs) <laughs> but like so as of now who would you say your youngest most relatable friend that you could go to when you don't want to talk to your mom and dad or you don't want to talk to old I d- people i do have a friend like that i that we were talking and like she started her own uh dog food like business like yeah. mini one it's called canine canteen mm. it's like dog a uh, dog crackers and stuff for like mm. dogs and she does makeup she's like she is amazing at special effects. If you ever need like special effects, like if you need your like head oh. like cut out or something, like she can do that wow. uh, with makeup, <laughs> not like with a knife and stuff like that. But like she's incredible and she's started her business slowly and of course like helping and like talking with her and stuff is really cool. And yeah. have, have you heard of um, someone named Caleb Maddox? Yes, I have. So he is. He, have you heard of Caleb Maddox? Yeah, I think they're friends. Oh, you're no, friends? I've never met him. Oh no, no. So he's doing something pretty cool. He's like developing a program, like Apex Kids or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's Focus. he's amazing. I, I saw a YouTube of him. He closed like a ten grand deal on the phone. What? Yeah, Caleb Maddox. He, this was like years ago before he like blew up. He had Gary V as his mentor. Yeah, wow. but yeah. I, this this was before. Like there was a video on YouTube. It was just like with a camera. He's like, I'm gonna close a ten grand deal. And he's just like yelling at this person. He's like, and then bam, like bank transfer, ten grand. I think wow. he was fourteen. He was wow. fourteen in the video. Wow. Yeah, it's impressive. Uh, but I like that how, he, how he's supporting um, the growth of like kids right now, yeah. and building programs for them. And, teaching and them. one of the things that I uh, I I do as well is I've created I created my book around when I was I think. Uh, seven years old right after I got asked what do I want to be now I created this book that was um it's called how to be and raise an unstoppable kid and so it was like all of my years of learning how to create a business all of these different types of things all put into this one thing and I remember all of my mom's events that she used to host uh, whenever they would bring, like, the families would bring their kids or something, I would, like, take the kids and, like, host my mini entrepreneurs <laughs> event with them. Like, hey, this is how to run a business. I was, like, the mini, mini Rhonda Swan, you could say. And so I would, like, help them and stuff like that, which I, I don't know why I went to that, but I just, like, oh, wow, kids, helping you, kids. Like, Where oh. can people find that book? That um, we haven't released it yet, but we're going to be releasing it very waiting soon. waiting list. We'll yeah. just get you on this podcast again when you're, like, yeah, I'll buy a book. Yeah. And we'll buy, I'll buy like 30 copies. Yeah. 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 And you I'll start a letter. Sit around and just. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to pick my nose. Let's and if no one buys, I'm just going to abort. <laughs> um, so what I want to know is what, what do you think? Because now that you're kind of leading this next generation of kids, you're getting invited to speak all around the world. They're flying you out. Uh, mom and dad are like your biggest supporters, but they're also there with you as well speaking on stage. Yeah. What do you feel when you meet other 12 year olds? Do you feel like there's a disconnect in the mindset? I feel like sometimes, but I feel like I feel like I'm still a kid. So yeah. of course I can connect to anyone like I can be like, hey, let's let's play in the mud. Like I can dr- turn into a kid at any but time. Yeah, yeah. there's it's actually like, a story. I remember when um, we were talking, we we're having like a yeah. deep philosophical conversation about like economics and philanthropy and all of that stuff yeah. and we were talking right so i like we were around this height and she wasn't sitting on a pillow but we were the same height so i almost forgot she was 12 and then literally within a second she got up and she was like mom dad it's my birthday we gotta go bowling <laughs> it was such a <laughs> wait when thing. was this it was like a while back it was such a conversation we were talking i think a while back it was on my birthday it was it was a while back it was a while back but you got, it's so funny just the different disconnect of how there's like a wise old soul in you, but also this playful kid that still yeah. doesn't let the business 
take away from your playfulness. You should have seen me at Detective Pikachu in the theaters. We went with Ginny and Oscar, um, and we went in unicorn pajamas and just strolled in, got some popcorn, and watched Detective Pikachu all night mm. um, at the movie theaters and stuff like that. We're like, on my birthday, going to bounce and like at a trampoline park and trying to do dodgeball, but don't know how to play dodgeball and stuff mm. like that. But There's another like, question that I just thought of right now because you yeah. just said uh, Jeannie and Oscar going to the movie, so it was yeah. just something that came up. And I won't tell your dad. Yeah. Like, pretend he's deaf and he can't hear you right now. But Why? Have you, have you ever had a boyfriend? Or no. Never? Mm, interesting. What do you think that's going to be like? Well, I have no idea. I've always been like... You guys going to hold hands? <laughs> I've always... I, I feel like when I was, like, in school, that was, like, the times when, like, no kid like has a relationship yeah, with anyone have else. Cooties. <laughs> everyone still thinks I don't everyone like has cooties, cooties for the longest but like, time. But like the year I left was the year that everyone like I asked. I started. I hung out with my friends like a month after I left school, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I've had three boyfriends." I'm like, "Wait, I've These been just kids, <laughs> man." <laughs> I'm like, "Wait, I've been in my room drawing all day, and you've <laughs> like all this type of stuff, which I find hilarious." Yeah, but those kids when they grow up, like. uh I don't even want to say, but yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember when I had my first girlfriend, I think it was around your age and man, when I held her hand while we were rollerblading around the ring, my heart just f- exploded oh in God. so many things, but that's all we did. That's all we did because you have to wait till marriage, of course, duh, or else Brian Swan's going to end their lives. <laughs> so what's next for you then? You're 12 years old. Um, Most people have midlife crises when they kind of appear to have everything set is there anything that you want to accomplish um well um i'm gonna what uh <laughs> i feel like i feel like what i want to be able to accomplish is i just want to be able to get my voice heard i feel like so many people don't have their voice open and people aren't listening yeah. and by being able to do things like this i just want to be able to inspire people to live their dreams now and take action because that is the hardest step you can do but everything else is going to be of course hard but it's like just by taking that one moment you can accomplish so many amazing things and by inspiring people to live their dreams now i feel like in normal society you have to go to school you have to go to college get a job get married uh have a job like all this type of stuff and then retire and then you can do what you love Mm -hmm. yeah but it's like i want to inspire people to take action and actually try to do something different and then i'm hopefully going to be releasing a new collection in this year hopefully i don't know whenever i feel like it really whenever whenever i have time yeah whenever i'm just yeah Yeah. (laughs) so but I'm going to be having like some Burning Man collection, like here's, a mini one. Here's another out, interesting like question. That. I love this because you have so much wisdom and so much just like knowledge at your age. So it's very curious to see what you think is going to happen. Say I was a producer yeah. from Hollywood, right? So I had like those shades and I was like, oh, like don't, no, no, no selfies, please, no selfies. Yeah. And I saw your story and I basically was like, okay, I want to create a movie of your life. But instead of when you were one to 12, I'm going to create a movie of your life from age 13 all the way up until you're 40. Mm. What would that movie be about? Oh, and I this see is where your you're life. Going Do you know what I'm talking here. about? I, I understand. Uh-huh. What happens Smart in the movie? Smart question. Um, what happens in the movie? I dun, 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 this summer. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, I make my well. No, this is a no, movie, so no, there's no hopefully. No, this is no hopefully. I just catch myself. She said catch herself because her mouth went too far from the mic. Sorry. (laughs) Um, But I am a million dollar business owner. Okay. I have, I still live in Bali with my amazing Bali dogs. I love them too much. Mm. Buttercup? Uh, Buttercup buttercup and Oreo and Choco. They're the best. I'm sorry. Have they met Jinta? Yeah, I don't think they only they're. met through like Instagram stories. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? We should meet up sometime. <laughs> um, but I have my I've made my first million dollars. I have been being I've been able to speak on a TED talk and uh, at the ClickFunnels events. Mm. 
and I have been able to go to, I forgot what the place is called, but it's a very cool place that I want to go to. Um, I think it's like the World Leaders event, Mm -hmm. uh, where inspirational people for eco-friendly and like learning different types of stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, Cut that out. Uh, But... Ah, this is so hard. I got you cuz the because thing about the thing about you is you've been on so many interviews and they probably ask you the exact same thing like how your friends in yeah. elementary school like what's your favorite color? So it's so cool because now it's going to start actually allowing oh. you to create the life that you want. I know. You know? I have given um, one um maybe 500,000 uh 500,000 school uniforms to children in India Mm. I've been able to take out I've been able to reduce the amount of water taken out like for fabric like if you don't know cotton takes 750 gallons of water to create um while the materials I use like bamboo take zero percent water I've been able to reduce the amount of water let's say maybe 20% of being used like being used in shirts and so that's that's what I'm thinking you know what's amazing is that when you if you were to ask anyone else that question it'd be like I'd have this I'd have this I'd have this and all of her questions are I'd be able to provide or give or Mm -hmm. accomplish this for other people it's like yeah your your goals are like very inspiring thank you and even just like keeping that because we're all close now because we all are basically neighbors and we all find ways to collaborate and help each mm-hmm. other. Like, I just want to tell you, and this is if the podcast wasn't even here, if we didn't have these cool mics or if we uh, didn't even do a static dancing before this, <laughs> is your personality and where your heart is and where your intentions are, as long as you keep that, you always have all these amazing people that just want to support you. And the reason why is because when adults and me and, like, my friends and all the people that come to your events, when they see you, it actually reminds us that we're still playing small and that we should dream a lot bigger. Yeah. And that's like the biggest thing, that's like your superpower is you're able to help people like me and other people to realize that, okay, am I being satisfied right now? Am I being lazy? Am I doing all that I could do when there's this 12 year old girl out there that's almost eradicating all of the poverty because of her fashion brand? Yeah. It's such an amazing thing. And my main thing is I want to be able to inspire. I want to be able to teach people about what fashion is doing to kill our earth. Uh, fast fashion is the largest contribu- uh, second largest contributor to waste on our planet next to oil. And yeah, that's why I've been throwing everything away, right? I've just been wearing. No, like kinda that's like, but that's. Oh wait, no, no, I'm not supposed to throw wait, everything wait, away. I'm recycling it. You shouldn't throw <laughs> it away. Guys, buy it. You have to give it Mike to people. For sale. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Is that a link? We'll make that a link. Make that a link. I don't even know what to sell. I own like three underwears, <laughs> or five underwears. When I said probably, but you were saying. <laughs> um, but fast fashion, like big fast fashion brands like H and M, Zara, mm-hmm. and Forever Twenty One. The devil. <laughs> The thing is they can change, but the thing, like, a lot of people share these videos, like, oh, they're starting to recycle, or, oh, they're doing this now, like, oh, this is incredible. I'm like, if you look at the stats online, like, 90%, uh, 99% of the things that they say they're recycling, only 1% gets recycled. Mm. And so it's, like, all these different things, and it's all in it for the money, which I hate. I want to be able to make money so I can give them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be able to make it to make it. I remember, yeah. I feel like with fast fashion brands, like they outsource to places like Bangladesh, China, and Forever Twenty uh, of Forever, <laughs> forever Twenty One. <laughs> they forever Twenty One. <laughs> and other step up Forever Twenty One. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> and other they outsource to places like in Bangladesh, India, and China, and all these different other places. Uh, all these different places. I don't know why today I've been my like my words have not been coming out. Yeah, yet. it happens sometimes. Like I'll try having a conversation. I'll just it's just like my tongue is. I, I'm just gonna say next time we have this interview, it's gonna be a lot better quality. So stick by. <laughs> yeah, can uh, we can we like dress up as Pikachu detectives? Sure. I like that idea. Pikachu detectives. I think, so. detect- oh, I think that, remember every single podcast we have an idea of yeah, what yeah. to do. We're well, definitely what I gonna do is take her merp and use it as one of these. Things. Uh, so merp. If, we had, if you or a guest can't think of anything to say, I'm just like merp. Can we put like uh, her face? On the mouth, like it's almost like you're yeah. bleeping something. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, okay, we're, cut this photo. Like, <laughs> we're gonna need like a high quality recording of your merp, and we'll 
we'll put it in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and then can, can you go more about that the fast fashions and yeah. how your company is changing and so they s outsource to places like bangladesh yeah. china and other regions in india which make manufacturing cheap and makes the profits go higher and so these workers who work for them thousands of them die every single year because of how con the conditions are in places that they work in it's either not checked either they're in low quality conditions and the buildings fall down yeah and so they get worked overtime they only get paid one percent of what these billion dollar businesses are making and they use low quality materials like cotton, which I told before takes 750 gallons of water to create. Mm. And so then I found something called slow fashion, which is the opposite. We use eco-friendly materials like bamboo, which takes 0% water to create. We all make everything, we make everything in Bali. We pay our workers salary, we pay their petrol, we pay their food, we pay their families. And so we're treating our workers like humans, not machines. Mm. And that's one really big value. And then like I was telling earlier about profit margins, if I have a 50-50% profit margin, $50 goes to all my workers, all that type of stuff, and the other 50% gets up, uh, splits up into three categories spending saving and giving easiest way how to represent this if you don't understand already um spending i'm able to buy froyo now saving i'm able to buy froyo in the future and giving i'm able to give froyo to people mm. and so just a simple thing to share for all those people who don't understand i remember a story that yeah. your mom was telling me on how an investor wanted to invest oh, millions oh. of millions of millions 30 of million dollars 30 million 30 million dollars $30 million. When he I was, was your in, age... He's a Shark Tank investor. Yeah, when I was your age, I just thought it was either 100000 and then Kajabillion. You know, there was, there was no there's like... Actually, I found out a random fact that there's the highest number like ever is called a Google. What about a Google Island one? Then, wow. You know, it doesn't end, right. <laughs> but back to the thing. They were... Someone wanted to invest, went up to your mom... Thirty million dollars. I want to invest into what, your no, daughter's he, he brand. No, he went up to me first. Okay. Because he didn't. He didn't know what to do since he's like, I don't know how to work with kids and stuff yeah. like that. He just went so up to you. Did he? He went up like, to me and he's like, Can the mom come over here just to like make sure? Wait, did I, should I re-say that because I was like over here? No, no, you can keep okay. it. Okay. Uh, but, <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, but he was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say this, <laughs> but um. <laughs> I'm going to give you, he's like trying to simplify it for like a child. He's like, I'm going to give you $30 million and you're going to give me 70% of your business. <laughs> and what did you say? And I'm like, really? Uh, he's like, but first I can get you on the cover of Vogue. I can get you in New York Fashion Week. I can get you anywhere. And I'm like, oh my God, this sounds awesome. But he's like, I want 70% of all your profits. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, hold up. And he's like, let me simplify this for you. Uh -huh. If you make like, uh, let's say a hundred million, you're going to get like, if you look at this, you're going to get 30 million and I'm going to get 70 million. It's like, wait, why can't I just get a hundred million? It's all my work. It's all my stuff. He's like, I'll let you have everything creative. I'll let you be able to do anything, but I get most of the money. And I'm like, no, no, I, I don't like that. If Did you say no, no, I don't like that? Or we <laughs> get the hell out of my studio. <laughs> but the thing is, we were like talking and I'm like, I want to keep my values. I don't want to have larger manufacturing. I want to keep the same people I'm working with. I don't want to outsource to places. I don't want to be able to make it fast fashion because that's the thing I'm going against. And I'm like, if I need to continue doing what I'm doing and take longer to make myself go on the cover Vogue or something like that, it's like I will do that rather rather than compromise my values. Wow. So. Man. And that's amazing because most people sell out so early. Yeah. yeah. It's like once you, once you have something awesome, like they, you sell out and make it a monster. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And then, I mean, if we look at the alternative, say you did sell it for anyone that's yeah. listening, that's thinking about just selling and getting out of their baby uh, or their, uh, the baby of the company, not out of the baby. What are you doing? Mike? Baby, Get out of your baby. baby Get out of your baby. Mer. I got like a brand new baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I sell it for thirty million dollars. What, what would you have done if you would have sold it? Would you have just done the thing is I would have not have done it anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't even been in your mind. No, that's so smart because so it, many people they build their businesses. Like there was a story I was talking to 
what's her name? Christina Lacchiani from yeah. Mind Valley. You you met her, yeah. and then there the Mind Valley Unsolved family. Yeah. We're all friends here, mm -hmm. and you know she was like telling a story about Richard Branson when he built his first company and sold it. He actually felt the sadness and depression because he was so tied to it and, and he wasn't able to work on it as much as he would have been able to exactly and so yeah that's amazing and i know we could talk for so long but i know that uh, how we long ha have we been we, we don't even want to look at the time it's 54 th minutes it could have been years <laughs> we the, we're like by the time we get up you're gonna stand up and you've grown like yeah. three inches i'm already having to stretch my legs because they hurt we could do some vinyasa yoga after this mm -hmm. yeah, i would like that in some did i just yeah. put my foot like over the camera just like no that's fine that's gonna <laughs> be a, that's gonna be a great transition yeah that's gonna be the intro <laughs> just like the hook. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the hook oh no the hook would i already know the hook it's just be like <laughs> he gave me 30 million dollars yeah. and i said no yeah <laughs> <I> Bam. <laughs> 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 he gave me 30 million dollars and i said <laughs> are you no. able to say who the uh investor was i do not because <laughs> also it was mr know. wonderful the screw you mr yeah. wonderful no no because yeah, also, also i forgot uh, oh, okay like, oh he wasn't like, that big of a deal he probably yeah. remembers no your name. no i forget a lot of people's name like for the first like month i knew you i thought you were called like moif or something moist, moist. it's like hey moist well it was even, get over here well actually I, your boy i think it was nose. i was I With think it, 30 bucks i think it was easy because like your name is mike but i feel like for the first month i forgot it i'm like What's his name again? Moist. But hey, moist. <laughs> That's like the worst name. <laughs> worst when you name when ever. you meet someone Hi, and what's your name? <laughs> My name's Moist. <laughs> moist. Uh, you know you uh, meet people and sometimes you say that word, they they just they they do I that. Think most they, people do. Why? And it's if you don't, you moist. just how do you describe a brownie? It's it's delicious. so wet. No. Oh my God. That's it's, weird. It's my so, body's so creamy. Wet, uh, creamy. Creamy. I think when I think of creamy, I think the word creamy it I should only be uh Created for like ice Italian cream? food and ice cream, <laughs> like the creamy sauces, moist ice cream, moist, moist ice cream. So there you I have it, guys. Like, Welcome like to like the show. <laughs> I think that's like the worst name of like ice cream. Like it's a moist ice cream. Like yeah, it's like water, ice, and flavor. Yeah. Like. So we got we got Holly Swan. We got the moist man. We got the medicine man. We got Swan over there, and we got Simone. What's what's the what do we call you? Maybe tea. that? Tea woman? Kratom killer. Kratom killer. <laughs> <laughs> the Kratom killer. Don't. So one of the big things, because we're going to end this pretty soon, and I'm yeah. going to be super sad, but. Yeah. Like and said, also, I feel like we went directly off topic. We went. Most of oh, no, that's the best. She talks to us, and we bring it to like, like the sixth like grade I've talking I've level. I yeah. feel like Voice if you were like, stuff. for the people who are watching, I'm sorry, because like whatever caption we put, like whatever caption you put. It would put, be like a long one. We'll be, just transcribe it and put it as a title. Whatever <laughs> caption you put, it's not going to be what we talked about. Like either way. Oh, it's either, it's either meet the 12 year old that does a hundred thousand dollars a year or meet the 12 year old that turned down 30 million dollars yeah. yeah. i don't i was already thinking I, I click think bait I, machine I, uh, but, we all, but we talked about this like at the last like five minutes so i don't and we only talked about it for like oh minutes. this is actually like actually screw it we're not gonna edit right now <laughs> bam <laughs> plot twist I'm, I'm about to get situated <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna lift my leg you know this is another like 30 minute position right here <laughs> Ready this is exactly hour. now that we got the story out of the way and the oh what's your favorite color out of the way <laughs> this is kind of what the idea of this is is because business isn't just about oh i want to save the world i want to make money i want to do things it's it's real human beings right yeah just being transparent and this is you just being transparent Merp. are you Sorry. tired no Sh should we take like a no i'm go. good just do you take nap breaks? <laughs> no, I haven't taken a nap. I don't do that. That's for eight-year-olds. Since I was five. And weak men like you, moist. My dad takes more, <laughs> my dad takes more naps than I do. Well, your dad surfs. <laughs> I surf. I'm a, a, I'm I'm a 12-year-old fashion designer. <laughs> You're right. I'm just irrelevant and oh. moist. moist. I'm, like that, I'm like that brownie that no one wants. The middle brownie that's too moist because you just want the crust. Uh, I don't like You're the so crust of brownies. What? Like what? What? That's the best part. I don't know if we can no, publish no, this podcast. No, no, I do. I do like the crust. I, but I mean, like, not the edges. Like, if it's at the edge of the pan and gets like really burnt crunchy. or like too crunchy, I like crunchy brownies. But I like the moist brownies more. Uh, mm. I think like have a top like with a layer of like crusty and like just bite into it and it's like gooey and it's like. Meh. And then what would you describe it as? Moist. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> so sorry for all the people who are watching. No, this is great. Dude, like, I'm, I'm, I want a brownie now. After you want a okay, there is a place that's called Made's Banana oh, Brownies. It's my favorite. They're yeah. so good. Do you so guys want to grab some brownies after? Because I'm only in for if we a like high five and then uh, like stop the frame so that we're like floating. And then <laughs> epic montage. Yeah. Epic montage. You know, <laughs> credits roll. Epic, just, <laughs> what, 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 it's always like that. Uh, it, we're gonna play the most uh, go-to royalty-free song. Yeah. Like a lot of <laughs> a lot of vegan YouTubers no, use it all no, the time. No, you know, <laughs> no, it's the it's the iMovie songs. The iMovie songs. The iMovie songs. Like you know those. 